In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build this game in React JS and in turn any game you want using all the power of AWS on your computer in order to help you code faster, navigate documents, troubleshoot, make AWS services easier to use and much more. We're going to be getting familiar with Amazon Q Developer CLI, an AI powered assistant designed especially for developers. And we're going to focus specifically on having it in your terminal. So here on the left, you can see your normal terminal. And here on the right, you can see the Amazon Q developer enhanced terminal. Here is the finished product of what we will be making in this video. But just a heads up, this tutorial is more about how to successfully use helper tools such as Amazon Q developer rather than the end result itself. We are doing this so that you have the knowledge by the end to make not just this game, but any game you want. And it can even help us store scores on AWS too, if you are someone that is new to AWS and finds it hard. So let's get to it. Here is a full list of what we'll be covering today in this kindly sponsored by AWS tutorial. We are going to look at installation and setup, your first Amazon Q developer command, productivity tips and shortcuts, creating Tetris, managing files, and adding your top scores to AWS. Installation and setup. Let's get Amazon Q developer running on your terminal. Some prerequisites you need to have are having Amazon Q developer CLI installed and being logged into your AWS account with the right permissions. We are going to do that now. Okay, so now on this page, which is titled Installing Amazon Q for Command Line, all you're going to do is just scroll down here. I am using a Mac, so I'm going to download Amazon Q for Command Line for Mac OS. And there we go. I'm just going to open it up like so and drag it over to my applications. We're next going to have to authenticate with Builder ID. But for all of you who are not using Mac OS, you can also use all of these commands in order to get to the same place that I am. OK, so just scroll down to find yours. You can also use the command line to install Amazon Q for developers using Homebrew. So all you're going to do is just copy this line here. Get up your terminals. I'm just going to make mine a little bit bigger. Paste brew install Amazon Q just like I am like this. Wait for that to do its thing. And then do Q version to check what version you are using today. Great. Now let's authenticate with Builder ID. OK, so now we're going to authenticate with Builder ID. So just go ahead and click here. And it should take you to the sign in with AWS Builder ID page. So all we're going to do is scroll down here and create your AWS Builder ID. So wonderful. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to AWS Builder ID profile. And you're just going to use an email address to sign up. So here is mine. I'm going to select my name. Let's get our verification code. Set a password. Create AWS Builder ID. And great, we are now on the AWS Builder ID profile. OK, wonderful. Now let's use the terminal to log in. So I'm going to do Q login just like so, log in. And let's do use for free with Builder ID. And you should get a pop up like so. So I'm just going to allow access. And great, we get this pop up. So here you can essentially set up your configuration. So you can enable autocomplete. You can allow instant execute after space. There is so much you can do. Please feel free to have a look around here if you have time. OK, great. So I'm just going to get rid of that and go back to my terminal. And that's it. Your first Amazon Q developer command. OK, now let's get to testing our first command. We use Q chat and then we ask, anything we want. So now that I'm logged in successfully, we can use commands such as Q chat. OK, so just like that. Welcome to Amazon Q and I can chat in here. So let's go ahead and do it. How do I create a secure S3 bucket? And we're going to get an answer. So there we go. To create a secure S3 bucket, you need to follow several best practices that ensure your data is protected. OK, and the best part about it is that you get guided through the process 
So here you will have very precise instructions as well as it helps you create a bucket using AWS CLI. How great is that? You get all the commands and all the explanations instantly. Let's move on. Productivity tips and shortcuts. Here are some productivity tips and shortcuts you might find useful when using this tool. Okay, I'm just gonna clear this. I'm just gonna take you through a few shortcuts that I find useful. So for example, you could use QDoctor to automatically debug and run QIssue to create an auto-populate issue. If you wanna see what other stuff your Amazon Q developer can do, it's good to go to what's new, where you see the version. So this is our version, and you get all the release notes with all the changes, as you know, perhaps you're watching this future and your version is different from mine, and this tutorial maybe is a little bit outdated and has some different stuff. So please go ahead and check here first before continuing. Another thing you can check, of course, is Q help to see the current popular subcommands in your version. So we've already used chat to chat with Amazon Q. You can use translate. We've already seen doctor. We've discussed issues. You can also view the settings, which we saw in the dashboard, and you can also quit the app. To view all the commands, we simply use this. So just like that. Okay, and now here is a more extensive list of commands that you can use too. Okay, so now that we've covered the productivity tips and shortcuts, let's actually get to using this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger for us so we can continue. The first thing I'm gonna do is just navigate to a directory of my choice that I like to work in, and I'm going to use Amazon Q Developer in the terminal to help me create a Next.js project. So let's do it. I'm just going to initialize it with QChat and then I'm simply going to do create a Next.js project so we can build a game of Tetris. Enter. Okay, so there we go. We're going to spin up a Next.js project. So thank you very much. It's giving us all the correct shell commands to use. This is if we want TypeScript. So sure, let's allow TypeScript. I'm going to click trust. And now essentially it will create my project for me called Tetris game using TypeScript. It's also telling me what it's doing, which is quite useful. So for example, it's telling me it needs to install the following packages. It seemed like there was already a project called that. So it suggested a different name as well. So now it's going to ask my preferences. So I'm just going ahead and choosing what I would do and installing these dependencies. Okay, great. And we now have a project called Tetris Next.js in my development folder. It's now going to run it as well as create the necessary files for our Tetris game. So it's creating a components directory, a Tetris game board, a game board component, Tetramino shapes and logic. So it really is going ahead and doing the whole thing for me without much input from me. So here it is creating the components folder in the source directory in my project called Tetris Next.js. It even shows me the code that it's gonna add so I can literally have a look through here what it's adding to the Tetris file. So as you can see here, it's saving the drop time, the game over the score, the row, the levels. We even can set the stage here and start the game. So this is looking good. We've also connected the keys on our keyboard to functions. So we are able to move, rotate the player, set the player, reverse each row to get a rotated matrix, update the stage, and so much more. Okay, so this is looking good. I'm just gonna use T to accept that. We've also just created a file called Game Helpers along with the code, as well as use interval as well. And it's now choosing to accept that for me as a trusted move. We have also now added the styling, so we're using CSS as we chose not to use Tailwind. So here we are adding CSS to all the components that we have in our components directory. What is nice is it's also showing what it's removing when adding code to a new file. So for example, it's taking the boilerplate code that Next.js comes with and replacing it with our code right here in the green. And great, so now it's already running. So if I visit this URL right here, uh, you will see there is a slight error. So let's go back 
So now I'm going to create a new tab. Now I'm going to do Q chat. There is an error in my Tetris. Next JS game is causing the error. Use dynamic input with SSR disabled for Tetris component is causing the error. Please fix this. Okay, great. So the issue has been identified and it's now fixing the issue by modifying the page TSX file. Great. So let's go ahead and click T. And there we go. We've just debugged our game. Of course, you can go ahead and view this code. So if I just go ahead and open up VS Code, I can actually open this up in here. So I can go ahead and click open and in my development folder, there it is. Okay, there is the whole game. So I'm just going to open it up like so. And this is another way to just view the files that were created by Amazon Q developer. So as you can see, the components are all here. They are being updated by the terminal. But if you want to view them this way and make changes, you can do so from here too. Great. Okay, so there we have it. We have a game of Tetris. Of course, you can just going to show you things you can do. You can make changes if you have any errors that have popped up. As I mentioned, you know, you might not get the same as me exactly. So you might have to debug a bit. Just simply type in what your error is into the console, just like a chat, just like you would with a human. So saying, for example, I can't see the cells on the display or, you know, perhaps you've noticed a game is not working correctly. It is up to you. So, for example, I can do do not use the color green. Please use any other color. OK, so now it's thinking and it's going to update the Tetramina colors and replace green with different colors. It's already identified that this is just on the S piece. So that is now going to do its thing and all the green will be changed as soon as it's finished. And there we go. We get teal. Great. So you can easily make changes like that. Just once again, speaking to your console like a human. OK, so here we have a nice recap of all the new colors. And the next thing to do is save the user scores. So let's go. This is a little bit more advanced. So if you want to continue, please do. It does require some basic Amazon knowledge. But if you don't have any, don't worry, just follow along anyway. And I'll try my best to explain to you. OK, so please save the user high scores to my AWS account. It's going to tell us essentially how to do this. So here we go. It says we need AWS credentials to authenticate information about the service. We're going to use DynamoDB, the region information, the proper IAM permissions. And it's asking us if we'd like to add code to the Tetris game to track and prepare high scores. We do. We do want that. So let's go ahead and ask it to do that. And great, here is the code in order to do so. So wonderful, I can see here this looks good and you will be able to see that code update here in the components folder as well as this AWS folder here. So now we have a post request, which is correct as we are sending data to save the high score. Great. OK, so great. There is one final thing I need to do. So this has all been configured for me. And all I need to do is feed in my AWS access key and my AWS secret access key in order to be able to save my high scores to DynamoDB. So all of this, everything has been done. I just need to put my two credentials in here. So let's go ahead and get them. So for now, I'm just going to get the IAM console. So let's get it here. Sign into my console. Now, I do already have a username and password if I sign in using a root email. Let's get my security credentials. Let's create an access key. There we go. So here is my access key, which I'm just going to paste in like so. And here is my secret access key, which once again, I'm just going to copy. I will be disabling this soon, so you won't be able to use mine. And there we go. And here is the table that will essentially store my Tetris high scores. OK, now all we'd have to do is navigate to DynamoDB, find tables, create a table, enter the name of the table, just like we have in the ENV file, put zero as the partition key and click Create Table.
Great, and let that run. Okay, so that's all I would have to do and now we can essentially start the game and my high scores will be saved. So how cool is that? I really think this is awesome uh, and has really helped me understand how to use AWS and the code I would need for Tetris. So great, I hope you've enjoyed this. Of course, please let me know what you build with yours. Hopefully I've now given you all the tools you need to build your own games and troubleshoot them as well. If you come across issues or your code perhaps doesn't quite work, so how you would get around that and how you would change things up, okay? So great, I'm just going to try get one row at least. Okay, so great, there we go. Hopefully by now you have your own game or have the knowledge to build whatever game you wish. So you should, to recap, have a understanding of how to use the console in order to spin up new projects, ask the right commands in order to create games, troubleshoot those games. So in other words, change the code simply by talking to your console as if it was a human being and making sure that everything works. Okay, you can of course change up the visuals, that is also easy too. And now you should be able to save these scores. And that's it. I hope you found this tutorial useful and if you have any other questions, please do comment them below and I should hopefully get back to you. Thanks again and see you soon.